Are you seeing the video? We are. Sort of. Yes? Yes. It, yes, it's just a little laggy. All right, let me uh, let me go back to the beginning and start it again. At this point, the well, let me run it. There are the, the adjustments to drop the barrel down so that the knives go further in. Are you seeing those? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's one tweak we have to do. This opening coming out from under the hammer mill drops is up in here and the material drops down, this <coughs> opening needs to be enlarged. The drum switch needs to be mounted along somewhere here on the end so we can reverse the roll of the trowel mill so that it goes the other direction to drop the material out this side rather than out the right, off the left side rather than off the right side. white board right here has been replaced uh, with, with a steel board. This diverts any material that falls out of the top and the big black retainer portion was put on top of the barrel. I put the camera inside to show you the size of the screen holes. Um, what size are they, Len? The one inch. One inch holes. And there's the material that's coming out of it. So we're taking we're taking grass in, from the field that grows six to eight feet tall and reducing it down to about an inch and a half. I find that uh, if you go with a smaller screen, you create more dust and more waste. So this is kind of a compromise. It's still good for for what I'm using it for, and I'm sure for what. Uh, the market will bear. But if you grind it too fine, uh, you're just making dust. Did you have any problems with bridging when you, when it went into the tub before it went into the hammer mill? No, the, uh, I have a, a set of sickle boy mower knives that chop it up before it goes into the hammer mill. Okay. And that works very effectively. In fact, uh, you can make it feed too fast. Any other questions? Well, is, I, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was gonna ask, is it a hammer mill or a knife mill? Is it cutting or beating the, the material it's to get it? It's cutting, it's a... Uh, it's a knife mill, I've been saying it's a hammer mill. Well, the hammer mill beats the material. The, the, the blades inside the drum cut it and drop it into the hammer mill. The hammer mill has dull knives that just beats it into a pulp. So that may be creating more dust than we really want. Well, this machine 
doesn't make as much dust as the hammer mill that I have on my farm. Um, this machine has 48 knives and mine has 16, but it seems to, I don't know if it goes faster or what, but it, my hammer mill creates a lot more dust than this machine. So I'm, I'm really happy with the output on this one. All hammer mills are different. They, they what is what is the market you're going after here with these three cubic feet bales? Is this kind of a residential thing, or are you? I mean, I think of a commercial chicken farm that's got a barn, a, you know, two hundred feet long and fifty feet wide or something. How much material are they going to use, and how is that? Would this work for that, or is that we need something bigger for that kind of thing? No, I'm looking at the backyard chicken market, which okay took off this year like crazy. It's unbelievable how it's blossomed during the pandemic here. And there's a, there's a huge market for, uh, for this bedding. So would you go to like Tractor Supply and try to get them to move this? Or is this something you'd try to sell? Yeah, yeah. that's one thing we're going to try to do. The, uh, most of the bedding on the market today is uh, pine shavings. And it's uh, made from pine trees that are made from clear-cut areas. A lot of it is made up in uh, Canada. And uh, we're, we're trying to replace that market with a, with a um, eco-friendly solution. Mm -hmm. Well, so, what does the market bear in terms of price for this product? Do we have a range? Yeah, we're, we're looking at $5 a bag. The uh, pine shavings sell for anywhere from six to eight, depending on the time of the year. So at $5 a bag, we could probably get three to $400 a ton for switch brass. We're calculating about 66 bags per, per uh, ton that, that come out of the, of the unit. Uh, Bruce Trombauer is setting up a permanent poultry bedding processing, and, and he's selling bags for $7 a bag or for three for three for 20. Is he, and is he doing that directly or is he doing that to it? He's doing that directly to his neighbors, yes. We haven't really started to market this yet because we have to make the product first. Right. And that's, we're right on the verge of doing that. I have a system set up on my farm with a self-unloading wagon that I'm going to use to fill bags, but I have to make a uh, screen, yeah, a, a trommel screen for it before I put that on the market. Uh, so there's more to this. You, there was something in about a, a round bale unroller. Is that something that's part of this trailer or is that an additional piece or where does that come in? It's, it's a separate piece that's going to be sent out with the trailer. It fits on the trailer, and that mounts on a, um, a three-point hitch on a tractor. Okay, it's so... A, uh, once you spear the bale in the center, you can unroll the bale by hand. Okay, so, and that, you, so large square bales is probably not something you want to do then if you're, when you're baling is you want no, to do open bales? No, they, would, they wouldn't work. Right, okay. So round bales only. Round, round bales, bales small, small square. square bales. Small square you can just drop in. Yeah, that, that goes right up the conveyor and drops in. Okay. Mountain, Mountain Lake, the bee place that's just outside of Wilkes-Barre. Um, they've been selling bee equipment for forever. I took my grandson there and he cost me $77 in equipment, but they've They've converted and they're selling, they're selling chickens now. And I'm trying to get somebody to go there and talk to them about bedding and, and selling our bags of bedding because they have a tremendous worldwide market. Um, and if they're, if they're sending chickens out by UPS, they can certainly send bedding out by UPS. Amy, did you have something? Yeah, so I was just curious as to if um, the machine that you just showed accepted small squares or if it also accepted uh, loose material and how it would process with loose versus small squares. 
just the efficiency and the ability of it to process it the way we want to. Len, take it. I didn't get that question. Could you repeat it, please? Sure. So my question is, um, the machine that we just saw um, highlighted here this afternoon, does that machine accept small squares or does it also accept, accept loose material and how does the processing capacity work for both? It'll take small square bales and loose material. Uh, you'd have to feed the loose material by hand onto the conveyor. But Is it'll take... Is there any problem with it blocking up with the loose material or does it feed through pretty good? I'm sorry, I didn't hear that one again. It, it feeds through pretty easily, Amy. It'll it'll go right up the right up the conveyor and and drop into the barrel up on top. Uh, the one thing that we've discovered is you can't you can't load that conveyor solid with material, at least with the current settings on those knives, because it it backs up and and um, overflows, and that's why that little ramp is off to the one side to, to drop and that loose material. I just went over, picked it up, put it back on the conveyor, and it went right into the machine with no yeah, problem whatsoever. Of, right. That's kind of a good problem to have, though, that the machine's able to process a higher capacity. Yes, so, it right, is. Cool. Thank you. I've got another video I'm going to attempt to show you. It's, it's, the, it's the main show, so I'm hoping it's going to run uh, <laughs> on my share screen. Did it come up? Yes. Our generator we're out in the we're out in the field um, and this is the generator the association bought to power the unit and this unit right here is the bale on wrapper uh, you spare the center of the bale and it will will unwind we'll be testing that here in, in Wap Wallop in next week you can see that there's very little material coming up that conveyor that's because the machine the barrel is sitting too high above the knives and the material is not getting down to it um, we'll we'll get that down so that the knives are further into the barrel and that should eliminate that problem Len just grabbed his stick and he's going into the, the dropout area um, that that opening has to be expanded so that the material will flow out of there more freely. Question? Is the video coming across? Yes. I just had a question I was going to ask you uh, that was related to what you just shared. 
what was your what's your throughput per what's your cubic cubic feet uh, throughput per hour? Haven't, this currently haven't set calculated. Up? We have not calculated that yet. Uh, that's part of what we'll do when we when we run it after we make the adjustments and get everything tweaked. Got it. here at the bottom of the conveyor that needs to be opened up. questions or comments so the purpose for it being a mobile unit versus a stationary unit is is what to move it from farm to farm so that a farmer can process his switchgrass into poultry bedding to service his neighbors or service a store we will start doing we were supposed to do training this summer but with the coronavirus, uh, we, we postponed that. And we have permission to go for another year on, on, on the grant. So we'll just move everything back a summer and, and start. Now next, next August, we'll have the unit at the um, Ag Progress Days and have it set up in our area and then do demonstrations of it periodically during the course of the day. Another component of the, of the Grant was to try and find someone who was willing to manufacture the unit, take what we've done and, and, and do manufacturing and sales of the unit and, and maybe kick back a little bit to the association to keep us financially solvent. Anything else? I have a question. Have you determined uh, a reasonable rental rate yet? Initially, uh, initially, we're going to pay the farmers <laughs> to learn how to use it and, and to take it for a month. Uh, after that, it, it will not go out to, to a farm unless the farmer has been trained in its use. And it'll be their responsibility to pick it up, fill the gas, to, 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 to pick it up, take it to their farm, use it for a period of time, and then bring it back with, with all of the uh, reservoirs of fuel filled to the top. Amy? So I noticed in the design underneath the, the, the screen, um, 
all the dust falls under there. Is there a pan that you can pull out to empty that periodically or is that getting shoveled out right now? How is that working for you guys? Uh, what will happen is that, that dust that drops out of the trowel mill will be shoveled out. Okay. Uh, the door opens up there and you can put a, a, a pan shovel in and, and pull out the material that's there. Um, I have a pellet mill that I just brought up to the house and I have a bag of that material from Bruce's place. Uh, I'm going to see how well it works for, for pellet production because it, okay. it, it's a byproduct of this process and you don't have to run the material in through a hammer mill. Um, so we're hoping that, that it'll produce pellets pretty easily. Sounds good. So you, you mentioned that you need to open up the, uh, the offtake on, underneath the hammer mill yes. where it's to be clogging. And I guess Len, you had a nice stick for, for getting that stuff unclogged um, for right now. But I, I guess I'm a, I saw a lot of shielding, which I was really pleased to see on, on a lot of the moving parts. And, and um, But that's a really dangerous area right there. And I wonder if there is a way to, to extend some shielding over that space once you open it up again so that it, it doesn't become tempting for people to try to unclog it themselves without um, a stick. Well, the, the, if you stick something in there, you're going to hit the screen before you reach the hammers. You, okay, uh, so the screen's it's virtually there. impossible to, to hit the hammer in there because the screen is blocking your way. Got it. And that's a really- The machine point. itself is, is fairly safe. It's, uh, I guarded as much as I could and, uh, you know, we'll go over everything and make sure there's no safety issues. Great. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? I had a question. I'm, I'm sorry yes. I interrupted you. I didn't, <laughs> that was, I had a um, similar question um, are, with the uh, safety mechanisms. Are there any in place to stop it um, if there's, you know, if there's a problem in the processing? Any any mechanisms to what? Any um, safety mechanisms that would just automatically stop stop the motors or um, pause it if there's something if there's a problem with with either you know processing um, the bedding or if something gets stuck in, you know in the, in the process is there like a safety mechanism to shut to shut off the um, the motor or something? There's there's nothing that's automatic. But there's a there's a master switch that's right by the operator that if he just if he wants if he needs to he can just flip that switch and that cuts all the power to everything. Um, okay, I have I do have another question. Sure. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. Um, and um, on, on the market, are there other products, other units out there that are um, comparable that you've looked at? No, there's nothing out there that compares to what we've put together. This, this has been a process. Amy Barclay did a, a study through Penn State when she was working on her master's degree, Amy, or, do or doctorate? Oh, no, just my master's. <laughs> okay, your master's degree. And, and she did an initial study with, with poultry bedding. We, we then went from what Amy did and she determined the size and, and the scope of what the material needed to be cut down to. And we did a SAR grant for around $15,000 where we investigated the processes by which we could take the desired results and figure out how we were gonna get there. And then we did a, a, a second SAR grant that went around the state of Pennsylvania promoting the concept of the association and growing switchgrass for poultry bedding. And this is the third SAR grant based upon Amy's work, taking everything we learned in that first association grant and pulling, pulling all those criteria together, the size of the material, the density, the, the dust factor. We, we made material that had so much dust in it that poultry users or poultry growers were turned off by it. They were they were afraid to use it because it was so dusty. That's where the trauma the trauma mill came in, um, and and one of the things we were hoping to be able to do was to to do this processing out in the field, so that 
we, we, the dust would be left in the field. There wouldn't be in an area where civilization resided. And, and so that's why the generator was, was incorporated. Okay, thanks so much for coming. I appreciate every, everyone's attendance. Uh, these these uh, videos will be online and, and linked to the, uh, the, the, to the website. Thanks again, everybody. Yep, have a good afternoon, thank you. Thanks for everything. Thanks, have a good afternoon. Thank you.